Hey everyone, welcome back to the video. This is just a quick intro because we've got a lot to cover. As Roblox exploits become more advanced, bypassing anti-cheats more easily, it's more important to secure your game. In this episode, I'll show you how to defend against remote event misuse, one of the most common methods used by exploiters to manipulate client-server communication. Let's jump right in it. So, just to help you guys really understand what remote event misuse is, I've put together a simple damage system. I'll show you exactly how exploiters take advantage of remote events when developers don't secure them properly. Exploit developers often use Infinite Yield's Explorer command to take a look at the game's structure. With it, they can browse through remote events, GUIs, scripts, and pretty much everything the client has access to, except for anything inside server script service or server storage. That means if you've placed remote events in replicated storage or scripts in starter GUI, an exploiter can see them and possibly misuse them. As you can see here, the exploiter joins the game and runs their explorer command. The first place where most every exploiter checks first is the replicated storage. Here they find a remote called give stats. Next, they create a new local script inside starter player scripts input their local variables into the executor, and fire the remote with the desired amount. After that, they copy and delete the script, placing it into replicated first. Just like that, they receive the amount they specify. Keep in mind that most things exploiters do on the client side only affect their own experience. They can't directly impact other players. However, remote events are a major exception. When misused, they can affect the entire server or unfairly grant the exploiter rewards or stats they didn't earn. Protecting yourself from exploiters can get a bit complex, but a great first step is making it harder for players to find and target your remote events. For example, instead of naming your remote events something obvious like give stats, which basically hands the exploiter a red flag, use randomized complex names. I recommend using a password generator or similar tool to create unique hard to guess names for your remote. Now, create a couple of complex names. Now this is not really for a password, but we don't want to reveal the remotes to the exploiter, of course. Now give the real remotes complex names, but don't forget to change the remote names in the script also. Take it a step further by creating 10 to 20 decoy remote events with similarly complex names alongside your real one. These junk remotes will serve an important purpose later on. Don't forget to update the remote event names both on the client and server side so they stay in sync. The advantage here is that players can't see your server scripts, so changing the server side remote names keeps the real one hidden and protected. Feel free to make around 50 remote events. I know that it's going to be a hard task, but trust me when I say it's worth it. Now, depending on all the remote events your game has, you're of course got to make more real events. Now, if that's the case, I'd recommend always adding six junk remotes every time you add a real one. This system can be easy or hard to manage depending on how many registered events your game uses. To set it up, create a script inside server script service and call it something like remote checker and define a table called allowed remotes that contains all the valid remote event names. Now, here's the important part. We use a for loop to go through every remote event inside a folder, like replicated storage.remotes. The syntax looks like this. For underscore sign store remote in ipsum underscore sign store remotes folder get children do end underscore signs slash the underscore is just a placeholder for the index number, like 1, 2, 3, which we don't actually need in this case, so we use underscore to ignore it. The remote variable represents each remote event object as we loop through the folder. Inside this loop, 
we connect a function to remote.onServer event. So whenever a player fires that remote, we can check if it's allowed. Since this script runs on the server, players cannot see it or the allowed remotes table, keeping your setup secure. Now, copy the code and add the names of your allowed remotes into the list. For each remote, press Enter, then type two quotation marks, and inside of them the name of your remote. Again, only the remotes that actually have a function, not the junk remotes. If an exploiter joins your game and tries to fire a remote event that isn't on your approved list, the server will immediately detect it and kick them out. The process works like this. The exploiter attempts to fire a remote event. The server checks if the event's name matches one of the allowed remotes. If the event isn't recognized, the server kicks the player with a clear message about exploiting. This simple check is a powerful way to keep your game secure from unauthorized remote calls. But what if the exploiter actually finds a registered event? Now I recommend making at least 100 seriation, so you're making it almost impossible for him. But if he finds a right one, I'm going to show you what to do then. When an exploiter fires a remote without the proper information or fires an unregistered remote, we can actually turn that against them. On the server side, we can script a system that kicks any player who tries to fire an unrecognized remote. This way, players who start randomly triggering junk remotes get removed immediately. In upcoming episodes, we'll build on this and create a more advanced ban system. But for now, kicking is a simple and effective first step. I hope I could help you guys with this. Now, in May was a little bit boring, but remotes are on the exploiter's source on cheating. In upcoming episodes, I'm going to show you what to do when he actually finds a right remote with even the right information and what it's all about, how to make an advanced data store ban system, anti-fly and anti-aimbot systems, and all a lot more. See you.